So you want to be a monk? Well, folks, we are in for a good evening, and the phones are ringing off the hook. You want to know why? Because we've got it. We've got the Lemon Lime Key Juice. Yep, and for only 12 easy payments of $29.95, this could be yours. What was that? Folks, you will not believe what I just heard. We are now offering this Key Juice double the offer. That is one, nope, two cases of Key Juice for 12 easy payments of $29.95. And I can't tell you anything I like more than cracking a nice key juice in the morning. Ah. Yeah. Whew. That's good stuff. We can just spar, it's okay. Seriously, this is my show. You can't talk to me like Hey everybody, it's Luke from Nerdcraft HQ where I build some cool stuff and paint minis as well, but that's not why we're here to talk today. We're here to talk about playing a monk in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. I should also say that I do run some homebrew rules in my campaign, and that might not work for your campaign. That's alright, don't worry about it. I'm just here to share my opinions on playing a monk in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. So, let's get started. Fortunately, everyone has key. It's the energy within us. Some people get seduced by it. It surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. We are again at the place where it's easy to get lost in all the choices, and it's important to remember that there are no wrong answers. So, whether your character made this choice um, on their own, or whether they were parentally or peer pressured, or if they were in the right time at the right place, all of these are viable options. Don't be afraid to flip the script and make something weird. Don't let the judgment of others decide how you want to build your character's backstory. Side note, I would suggest watching one of my favorites, Avatar The Last Airbender, or a definite classic, The Drunken Master, starring Jackie Chan, as some inspiration for your monk. So, let's get started on the build. In terms of a build, dexterity all the way. Max that shit out. You want to be the fastest, most evasive entity on the battlefield. If you, if they can't hit you, they can't do damage. So, when you get to 4th level, take your ability score increase, dump it into dexterity. Depending on how you rolled, when you get to 8th level, do the same thing, and make wisdom your second highest ability score. Also, there are some nasty multi-classes when it comes to being a monk, but I have a video just for that release date to be determined. So, let's talk about getting hit with unarmed defense. Unarmored defense is one reason why you want to have high dexterity and wisdom. To clarify, beginning at first level when you're wearing no armor and not wielding a shield, your AC, or armor class, equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier. That's a pretty major perk, and it should not be overlooked for some fancy armor. So, now that we've avoided getting hit, let's hit back. Key points. These are going to be handy in combat. Now that you are nearly untouchable, we want you to be able to beat the bones out of some bad people. You can use your key points on several features, most famous of which is probably Flurry of Blows. Immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. In total, at fifth level with extra attack as a monk, you can make four attacks. Now, if you didn't like the fighter option from my last video, but you liked all the attacks, the monk might just be the class for you. Monastic traditions are the monk's subclasses. In the PHB, it details three of them, and I think that's a pretty good start. There is the way of the open hand, which is like, I'm a monk and I don't need a cleric, I can heal myself. There is the way of the shadows, and that's like, I'm a monk and I'm sneaky and I'm, I'm quieter than the rogue. And then there is the way of the four elements, which is like, I'm a monk, but I can shoot fireballs like a wizard. And they're all detailed in the player's handbook. But if you fancy some more, like Drunken Master, for example, then you can find that and others in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, the Sword Coast Adventure Guide, and other online resources. Oh, and I am slowly but surely working with my good friend Cody over at Dungeon Master's Diary on Instagram, I'll link that below, on a new monastic tradition that I think you guys will like a lot. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. And if you found something useful out of this video, be sure to like and share it with a friend. And if you want to see more, 
don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. I also have other ways to support me in the description below, including an Instagram page and my new Patreon page, which if you pledge at any level before July 21st or by July 21st, then you get entered into a chance to win this miniature. I hand painted it myself. Maybe I'll just show a picture instead. Also, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon in these early stages. I need to shout out Anna and Jess, who both went above and beyond supporting me at the Craft House and Craft House VIP levels. I hope you all have a lovely day. Peace out. That's it, brother. That's it. Last one. I clapped not out of anger. I clapped out of being able to easily find the timestamp when I'm editing. So that's why I clapped really loud.